<laughs> I don't even know why the fuck. Good way to start a video. Bam! I will be doing a review today of the ICS BLE Alpha gas blowback handgun. This is ICS's first look into the gas realm. And they did not disappoint. This is a fantastic little handgun. Before I get into everything, please go down in the description. If you like any of the music I use in all my videos, uh, please go down in the description and support the band. Uh, the band name is Only Home. Uh, please support them. They're on iTunes and Spotify. You can also download their uh, album right from the website. And you can also follow them on Instagram and also like their Facebook page. All the information will be at the bottom of the description. So if you do like my channel, please support them because they're allowing me to use their music. And I love their fucking music. So if you guys like supporting my channel, it means a lot to me if you could support them and show them some love. So it's all Gucci. Also, there's always a giveaway going on from Fox Airsoft. There's always a link in the description too. Just fill out this little page. It literally takes 10 seconds. It's free to enter. And then boom, you're entered in to win an awesome gun. Alrighty, now let's get into the review. Uh, also, let me know if you guys like these style of reviews. They're more like relaxed opposed from uh, gameplay and chronoing and stuff. It's just a legit breakdown of the gun. Let me know if you enjoy these. Or uh, if I should make keep making them or if I should not. Just let me know. But uh... This gun will come in four different colors. It will come in uh, all tan and all black, like how I have. I just personally want, wanted the all black. You can get it with a uh, darker lower and a tan upper, or vice versa, black upper and a tan lower. There's four different colors. This gun is completely ambidextrous. So what that means is, let's say the slide's locked back. You have a slide release on the left and on the right. You also have a magazine on the magazine release, excuse me, on the left side, and you also have one on the right side. It does have some nice features. It does have this little rail down here so you can mount any laser if you would like to it. I, I don't like to run anything personally on mine, but I know a lot of people who like to run around with handguns only in like, let's say CQB, and they like to have a strobe on there on the front to blind players or a laser, whatever it might be, but it does have a little bit of rail space right here. It does have a little bit of serrations in the side of the slide. Don't know how well you can see that in there, but there are uh, serrations so you can get a better grip on the handgun. I will just have you know, when I got this handgun, I literally put a magazine in and I shot it, fuck, probably four times. And then the little red tip that was on it fell off. And that's not a big deal with me because it's not illegal to have a non-red tip on the front where I live. I live in Wyoming. There's no laws that say you have to have it on. It's just in the United States, when it is shipped to me, it must have a red tip, but it's not against the law to remove it in my state. Your state may vary on these laws, especially if you're in California. Their uh, air, new airsoft laws are kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. But uh, I did. I only shot this gun probably four times, and the red tip fell off, which I'm not mad about. I was like, fuck yeah, thanks. But also, some players, if you do need that on there, it could be a pain in the ass because it just fell off. The glue just looked like it didn't sit well. They did have a glue on it and the glue was dried onto the tip, but it looked like when it was seated into here, it just wasn't in there properly or like the glue didn't hold it well. So just a little bit of recoil that the gun had just threw it off. I'm going to start with the down flaws of this gun. Uh, the only thing I could find that was really bad about the gun that made me not like it was gas consumption. I didn't really recognize it at first just because I just didn't really pay attention. I just kind of missed it, I guess, just kind of overlooked the gas consumption. But you will get about one magazine out, which it's a 25 round magazine, which is respectable, I like that. But on a one entire gas fill, you will only get out one magazine worth of shots. Uh, you might, depending on the quality of your gas and the cool down of it and everything, and or if you're using propane too, you might be able to get a mag and a half maybe. But I usually only get out about 25 to 26 shots, exactly the whole magazine. And that's just a fucking annoying thing. As long as I could get the whole magazine out, I'm fine with. Because the ASG P09 used to only get out like 20 shots for me on a full gas mag. And that's like a 24, 25 round mag. And it would only let me get out 20 rounds on a full gas fill. So it, it doesn't make sense why they did that. I don't know if maybe I just got a weird P09. But yeah, this one's gas consumption is pretty bad. I guess it's not that big of a deal. As long as it can get the full magazine out, it's okay. But nothing would be worse than if you only have one magazine, you're on the field, you shoot it out, pull out a speed loader, load it up just to find out you can only shoot like three more BBs and then you are literally fucked. So just keep that in mind that the only fucking bad thing about this gun is the gas consumption. Now let's get into why I like this gun so much. Um, the performance, the accuracy is unbelievable for a handgun. With a lot of gas guns, I find out that um, the buckings are always either have imperfections or 
just with gas and stuff, they're just always inconsistent. Sometimes my shots will float up and then they'll drop and then drop again, then go straight. I don't know what it is. Uh, something on my end of the quality gas I use. I know it's not the BBs. I use high quality BBs, of course. But um, I just noticed a lot of gas guns tend to be kind of inconsistent. Uh, I like how this one, though, it will shoot perfectly straight every single time. And the hop-up is phenomenal. I could literally hit a someone in the chest 150 feet away with this handgun. No problem. It's kind of ridiculous because I'm pretty sure... Fuck, how long is the barrel? Four inches, if that. And you have phenomenal accuracy. This accuracy is actually on par with the ICS Captain, which is actually like a... I think it's a seven-inch barrel. But uh, I did a review on that one too. Check that out if you're interested in that gun. But uh, yeah, the accuracy are pretty similar with one another. It will come with the green gas magazine. CO2 will be available soon. It will shoot about 300 feet per second with the green gas and about 350 with CO2. So let's say um, you're going to CQB and the CO2 shoots just a little too hot, let's say. Uh, you can throw in the green gas and you can use that because that's a lower velocity or vice versa. If you go to Woodland, you can throw in CO2 magazines and then you can have a higher velocity for those outdoor games. I'm going to show you how to remove the slide so you can do your uh, cleaning and also just proper maintenance and everything and also to adjust your hop-up unit. You would want to uh, take out the magazine, of course, lock the slide to the rear. On this left side of the gun, there will be this little lever that you just push down just like that. Hit the slide release and it will slide off just like this. And right there, you can see your hop-up unit. As you can see this unit, you can actually adjust it with a fingertip. And I like that because with some uh, hop-up units I've seen, is they're so far down in there that you almost have to use the tip of your nail to do it. And since these little hop-up units are made out of polymer, sometimes you can actually chip away at them and make it even harder to get your fingernail in there. I like how this one's pretty easy to get. You can do it with actual, the tip of your finger and not just the nail. And it is in a super effective hop-up unit. And how you would put it back on is just everything in the reverse order, except on this right side, there will be this little circular button. Press that in and it will allow you to release this uh, left side of this lever and then you're ready to go. Everything comes off and the slide will release just fine because uh, the VFC M&P9, that gun, it wouldn't even allow you to take the slide off. Like internal parts would catch and break and it's almost like they never even tested their own fucking product to see if the slide can be uh, taken off properly. And you should always be able to take off the slide with ease. It should be easy as can be because you're always adjusting your hop-up unit for one. Second, you're always cleaning these fucking gas guns. So why would they make it such a complication to take off the slide? And I know the M&P 9 has nothing to do with this, but uh, it's just one of those guns I was looking at because uh, I love new and modern looking handguns, but I'm not I'm just kind of bored, honestly, of Glocks and 1911s. So I've been really into the M&P 9 market. And this does resemble an M&P 9. At least the upper part of the slide does. The slide does, at least. But uh, that's also why I got the M uh, P09 by ASG. Uh, I was just trying to get some new cool handguns, and I got the M&P 9, and it's just a horrible piece of shit. And uh, I'm happy to see that ICS actually allowed you to be able to clean and maintain your gun properly without any parts catching up. The thing that's so awesome about this gun is it's only $99 on foxairsoft.com. That is an unbelievable deal considering, in my opinion, the ASG P09 is one of the best handguns I've ever used along with the Elite Force 1911. And those are CO2, but they're all 120 to uh, the CO2 version of the P09 is 130 and the green gas version of it is 120. The CO2 version or the only version, I guess, of the Elite Force 1911 tack is 120 bucks. But what I love about this one is I think it uh, the CO2 will be $120, I believe. Green gas is $99. But even if you get the $120 CO2 version, the reason this beats the 1911 is there's way more features to it. You got the compatibility of green gas and CO2. You got way more uh, left-handed friendly users. So ambidextrous buttons, you got your uh, slide release and also your mag release on both sides. I just think the hop-up is way better than the Elite Force 1911. And to me, I just think that's awesome. You got a cool looking, new, uh, practical handgun that's modern looking and badass, but still gets the job done and more. I think the performance is phenomenal. I think um, all the features are great. 
It's just the only thing, like I said earlier, is just gas consumption. That is just the only thing you should look into. So if you're a guy who's really picky on gas consumption, this might not be for you. But if you're like me, and as long as it can get the whole mag out, I'm perfectly fine with. And it almost makes up for it because the performance is so phenomenal. I would highly recommend the ICS BLE Alpha handgun. It is phenomenal. Four different colors, green gas or CO2 mags of your choice, complete ambidextrous controls, fantastic hop-up unit and performance, satisfying recoil, reliability out the ass, and you come in at a phenomenal price. This is actually my newest uh, go-to handgun, handgun that I would recommend to players. So uh, I would highly take a look at it. There will be a link in the description to this product on foxairsoft.com. I would like to take uh, a minute to thank ICS personally for sending me this little awesome handgun. Their links will be in the description, of course. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please let me know if you'd like to see more gun reviews because since the weather's shitty here, I haven't been able to play too much airsoft. So if you want, I can just do a bunch of reviews of all my guns. If you guys would like that, just let me know down in the comments section. But yeah, you guys have a good day. Be safe and take care and take it easy. Bye. If you really care,